The wilderness uh, becomes famous for its title, occurring in a wooded area. Lee is crafty, and he knows that he's massively outnumbered, so he strikes Grant where he knows he'll be weakness. By the way, Grant is not in command of the Army of the Potomac specifically, but he's along for the ride. He realizes this is the main route of advance, so Grant's there calling the shots. Lee strikes in the wooded area near the Chancellor's house, where a battle had been fought almost exactly a year earlier at Chancellorsville, and manages to negate Union superiority in numbers and artillery, and the result is a bloody fratricidal conflict, with the woods catching on fire and soldiers blindly firing sometimes into their own men. The fighting goes on for three days, May 5th to the 7th, and the soldiers struggle with it. The Union Army loses 17,000 men, Private Robert McBride, 11th Pennsylvania, refers to the wilderness as a tragedy, grandly, awfully sublime. While another soldier, Private John Haley, from the 17th Maine, would just call it a dreadfully mixed up mess. The wilderness is not unique in any sort of manner. In many ways, it followed the pattern of previous battles, Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, the Bull Runs, the Seven Days Campaigns. Union Army advances, Lee does his thing, stymies that advance, inflicts casualties. But what happens next is where we begin to see the shift occur in the Eastern Theater. After the wilderness, does the Army of the Potomac retreat to lick its wounds? No. Grant, to quote him, keeps moving on. He will not let up. He will keep pushing. And he is lauded by historians for this, for his tenacity, for his stubbornness. But he's asking his men, who just fought one of the bloodiest battles of the war, to go and find another one the next day. And then after that, another one. And then another one. And another one. The war has changed, and Grant is asking a great deal of his men. 